When people think of Amsterdam, a few obvious things come to mind. Tulips, Heineken, canals, red light district, Stroopwafels. But what if I told you there's a much more interesting and quirky side to Amsterdam, if only you're willing to delve a little bit deeper. From hotels inside of cranes, from restaurants that only use food waste, to breweries next to windmills, street art museums, street art tours, food halls inside of old tram terminals, from offices on houseboats, old company canteens turned into hip coffee shops. This video is not about central Amsterdam. It's not about the canals, it's not about the tulips, and it's not about Heineken. I'm gonna introduce you to a new side of this city. De Pipe District, which is a hip neighborhood just south of the city center. It's very popular with expats, and one of my own friends actually lives there. It's full of very cute and colorful cafes, uh, beautiful vintage boutiques. It's still along the canal, so you can still get those gorgeous, pretty pictures that you're looking for, but without all the tourists. On my second day here in Amsterdam, I explored the Eastern Docklands, which are just 10 minutes tram ride away from Central Station, which is where everyone gets in and lands and arrives in Amsterdam. So just 10 minutes by tram and you can explore this very unique area. You won't find too many tourists around here, but you will find a lot of Dutch charm. So we had lunch at a restaurant that used to be the terminus for a steamboat company that had ships that sailed to Brazil and South America. It is now turned into a restaurant, but the decor is the same. So all the interior and decor has been preserved since the 50s, nothing has been changed. It's really a beautiful building to go into. They serve very simple, but very delicious um, Dutch cuisine, traditional Dutch cuisine. Um, so a range of different sandwiches, vegetable soups, um, locally made juices and drinks and lots of delicious cakes for dessert. So that is a unique place to eat while you're here in the Eastern Docklands and a good place to start your day here. A short walk away from this very um, beautiful restaurant, about 10, 15 minute walk is Brewery Thai, which is a craft brewery next to a windmill. So they say it's the tallest windmill in Amsterdam. Some people say it's the tallest windmill in the Netherlands. And right next to this windmill is this craft brewery. Um, it's very cozy inside, really nice atmosphere. Obviously loads of different beers to try. So grab yourself a beer there before you continue your tour of the Eastern Docklands. From here you can walk to the Maritime Museum, which is a stunning building and is a nod to Amsterdam's past as a maritime and shipping hub. Um, so it's a really beautiful and very large museum actually for a maritime museum. There's a massive ship next to it. It's a replica ship from the 17th century. You can actually climb aboard the ship, walk around. You can see the hammocks inside. You can see where the captain stayed, where the lower level crew um, would have sailed. Kids can go on and kind of shoot these mini cannons. And then inside the museum, museum itself, there's a lot of different exhibitions. One of which I liked was of these beautiful uh, paintings, uh, maritime paintings, and one was the cartography room. So maps and cartography, and they have maps from all over the world that the Dutch would have used, kind of when they were taking over the world. <laughs> So you're going to continue your walking tour then. A short walk away is Tar Peter Street and on this street is In Stock, which is a very unique concept restaurant here in Amsterdam that only uses food waste from supermarkets. So we're talking about food that is perfectly fine and healthy to eat, but the supermarkets throw it away just because maybe it doesn't look good, like cauliflowers that are a bit too small or peppers that have changed color and they think that customers won't buy them. So this restaurant buys this food waste from supermarkets and only uses food waste in their in their cuisine and in their menu. So we did have this cauliflower soup made from cauliflowers that the supermarket thought were too small and it was absolutely delicious. Every meal we had was good. It was all vegetarian. They change the menu all the time depending on what food they have and this concept has saved 
so many kilos, tens, hundreds, thousands of kilos of food waste. So this is a really good place to come and eat if you're in Amsterdam. If you guys are into street art, I think everyone loves a bit of street art, colorful paintings and decorations on the side of buildings all over cities around Europe, then you gotta go check out the Street Art Museum Amsterdam, which is in the west side of the city. So now we're gonna talk about the western side of Amsterdam. Um, this is sort of a living, changing, move, moving museum, whereby new paintings are getting painted all the time. And the woman that runs the tours is this Ukrainian lady, she's eccentric, She's um, quirky and she will ensure you have a really amazing street art tour. She's passionate, she loves Banksy, she loves Stinkfish and all these top street artists from around the world. She will introduce them to you, um, make sure you get to know them and you are familiar with them and then she will show you her collection. So it's her collection even though it's this entire neighborhood because she got these artists to come here and to do these paintings on the walls. She's sort of like a middleman between the Amsterdam government or the community, the local community and these famous artists from around the world and so she gets the permission and maybe the money from the local government and the community and then she persuades the artists to come here and paint the paintings. So it was really cool insight into street art, how it's done, if it's legal or not legal, and then really cool stories behind the street art as well. For another touch of Dutch history in the West Amsterdam area, you should go to Food Holland. It is definitely the best place to go for lunch. Um, I would say actually in Amsterdam, but definitely in West Amsterdam. It's a massive food hall that was once the place where trams would park at night and they would repair the trams. So it's this massive high ceilinged building, really, really long. There's over 50 restaurants to choose from. Um, it was the very first food hall or big indoor food market in the Netherlands. It even though it's just five years old. Went in there, there's Vietnamese food, Spanish food, Mexican food, whatever you're looking for, you can find it. And it's not too expensive either. So you can buy a lot of food, a lot of drinks, some beer, and pull up a table and enjoy it with some new friends. Also inside of Food Holland, there are um, some really nice boutique stores, sort of um, a nod to sustainable fashion, fair trade, and then there's a massive jeans shop. There's also a shop where local artists from the Netherlands, like kind of up and coming artists, are able to display their stuff. So it gives them sort of their, maybe the break that they need. And once you have eaten uh, more than you can eat, you can walk around the area, around Food Holland. It's a really beautiful area. Um, it's quite residential, but there's beautiful green par parks, pretty streets um, lined with trees, especially in autumn, it's nice with all the changing leaves. All very small small tiny boutique stores and then you can walk down to one of the main canals um, and see one of the city's mosques which is quite beautiful and then work your way back to the food holland again. So by now you have seen the eastern docklands and you've seen the west of Amsterdam. You're probably going to want to see a tiny bit of central Amsterdam before you leave. So sign up to a canal boat tour. We went for a much smaller, um, a little bit more luxurious and unique one. A very old wooden boat. We hopped on near Food Holland. Um, he gave us Prosecco and strawberries and chocolate. And then we sailed our way right through the center of Amsterdam, passing houseboats and all the, you know, the main streets. With the the coffee shops and the beautiful houses and then we ended up right on the Eye River and we sailed right up to our hotel, the Lloyd Hotel, which is where I'm going to end this video because it's where I recommend you stay when you come here to Amsterdam. So most of this video I've talked about quirky and unique and different things to do here. It's a kind of like an alternative Amsterdam guide and there's no better place to stay than the Lloyd Hotel if you're looking for something different. This hotel is packed with history. Um, at one stage it was an immigrant hotel. It was over 900 people were able to stay here in bunk beds that were three bunks high. It was later a refugee center. It was a jail. It was a center for uh, young juveniles. It was a center for artists. And now of course it's a hotel, which it has been for 14 years. And it's one of the only hotels in the world that has one star to five star hotel rooms all in one hotel. So some of the rooms have shared bathrooms and some of the rooms are big enough to have seven people staying with quirky bathrooms, with pianos. Another room you open the door and there's a piano in there. Another room you open the door and there's like a dining room that could seat six people. So every room is different. It's a really interesting concept hotel. So stay in the Lloyd Hotel, 
see Eastern Docklands, the west of Amsterdam, and go home and tell your friends that you saw a different alternative side to Amsterdam. <laughs>